Hello there, welcome back. Uh, today we're mucking about with very high voltage, uh, around a kilovolt, and we're testing these really nice valves. And they're called 813s. As you can see, they're a uh, big old valve. This is an 807, and this is a Neo 34. So you can see in in comparison, they're a big old meaty valve. Uh, where's the data sheet? Um, I intend to make a 400, 500 watt stereo amplifier at some point, uh, but it's it, it's not an easy undertaking. Uh, if we look here, at the data sheet, you can stick something like 2,500 volts on the anode or plate. Grid number two, 1.1 kilovolts, although I've got 750 here, and it's capable of about 125 watts max. It says here, but you can get more of you can get more out of it than that. Uh, as you can see, they are, they are a very meaty, well-built valve. This one here. Uh, what's this one? An RCA. This one's got quite a, if you can see that, quite a thin anode. On this one, you can see the thickness of the anode is somewhat more thicker. Big uh, ceramic, uh, what they call them, spacers there. Massive pins on the bottom to heat it. It takes about 5 amps at 10 volts to uh, heat it up. This is a uh, directly heated cathode rather than an indirectly heated cathode in that the cathode and the heater or filament is one and the same thing whereas like something like an 807 has a separate heater and the cathode is separate. So uh, yeah, it doesn't really make any any difference. Um, the difference, though, is that they are a lot. You don't really need to let them warm up, as you will see in a minute. They uh, come to pretty much full um, power, pretty much straight away. A uh, little bit about this mad rig here that I got set up. Trying to um, build a power supply that can provide over a, a kilovolt is no easy undertaking. For a start, the well, I'm, I dare say there are capacitors out there that are rated at uh, over a kilovolt, but you're talking a hell of a lot of money. And I'll just pause you there. We really need something like this. I mean, look at the bloody size of the thing. This is a 4,700 microfarad, 400 volt, 450 volt rated. I mean, I mean we. I mean, what you're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six of those, and you're talking what over a hundred quid a piece. Well, we can't do it that way, so using some of these, these are old, uh, new old stock capacitors 825 microfarads, 400 volt. I think these were made looking at it, I'm sure there's a date on them somewhere. 1985, yeah. So to start with, I had to reform all these, uh, which took bloody ages. But you can't just use them straight, you know, straight off. And so what we have here, we've got a big old um, Tektronics mains transformer out of a uh, 545B oscilloscope. Uh, this is a massive transformer capable of a hell of a lot of power. Uh, so basically what I've had to do, let me just go over here, we've had to basically connect all the various HT or B plus um, winding, secondary windings in series. So we've got one here 195 volts, 137, 113 times 2 and 180. Each one of those is going into a. Just get me pointy stick. Can't find it. Uh, 
and look, each one of those, when I, uh, well, start again. Each one of those is going into a bridge rectifier, each winding, and then onto a cap. And then they're all connected in series, as you can see, with a uh, 200k bleeder resistor across them. Eventually, when I do build a power supply, all the secondaries will be pretty much of equal um, value. But as you can see here, we've got all sorts of odd voltages. But all together, that gives us about a kilovolt, just over a kilovolt, at about two and a half amps. So this is not to be pissed about with. If you're going to build something like this, I mean, go, go carefully. You know, be careful. And it goes without saying. As you can see, mine is a bit jerry-rigged. I didn't have enough um, bridge rectifier, so I just had to mackle something up with some uh, 1N4007s. But they're at the bottom end of the high voltage chain, as it were, so they should be okay. Well, they have been so far. Then over here, we've got another transformer, and this is supplying our bias supply. Uh, this does something like 120 volts um, when it's rectified and smoothed. And then we're going into a pot here, and that's just so I can regulate the, um, you know, regulate and alter the bias. Uh, and then the base is just sitting on a bit of wood with leads everywhere. It looks uh, jerry rigged and whatnot, but it does the job. Well, I'll just clear the decks and we'll see about testing one. Uh, a little bit more about the power supply. All this lot here is being is basically going through an isolation transformer and a big Viriac. And then to supply the filament, we've got a really big power supply up here capable of 30 volts at 5 amps. So that's our heater wire coming down there. When it gets to the bottom there, it's at about 9.6 volts. Uh, what else? The 1000 volts is going from there into my fluke bench meter there to measure the anode or plate current. Uh, we have this one here that's monitoring our um, HT or B plus voltage, and this one here is to measure our, sorry you can see that, this one here is to measure our G2, grid 2 or screen grid voltage. And then I had this one here, just to, uh, to measure a bias, sorry just plugging it in here. I always like to see uh, when you know doing something like this, I always always like to see that I've got bias. Uh, it's just reassuring. Right then, try and power one up. Uh, this one, when I tested this one earlier on, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't warm up. The heaters didn't come on. So what I did, I just overclocked the heaters, put about 30 volts on it very briefly, and then it it came to life. Anyway, want you down. There we go. As you can see, the heaters are pretty bright. And now we'll bung some HD on it. That's a HD up there. I hope you can see that. Just doing it slowly. Hundred volts. Some monitoring. Grid two there. Come on. There we go. Let's make sure that's on there properly. Right, six hundred and ten. We're looking for seven hundred and fifty. You can't see that because of the bloody glare. 724 
750 and that means we've got 1020 volts ish on the anode and this one's quite a low as you can see that it's a bit hard to see that much sun in here I can't see whether you can see what I can see if you're with me this one's quite low 54 volts oh, 54 volts 54 milliamps and we have minus 62 volts on the grid we should be getting about 100 milliamps but uh, this one's weak this is the one with the dodgy heaters I've um, tried increasing the heater voltage to no avail uh, yeah I'm going to test another one now one thing that's a bit dodgy is that the uh, full 1000 volts is just there uh, but basically I'm keeping away from it so so what I do to get the voltage down because this takes quite a while for the voltage to drop I turn off the uh, HT well it's still got the heaters powered up let it drop to under 500 turn the heaters off and then I've got a uh, what do you call it capacitor discharge 1D thingy um, normal um, discharge tool thingy is just like basically a bit of wire with some um, big bit of uh, copper in there and it's got something like a 1k resistor on there for something with this amount of um, energy and power in there you want something a bit bigger than like your usual sort of 100 ohms so what I've got here I've got the HT connected to this big 2k um, resistor Why is that not coming down? Yeah, we're connected to ground. There we go. It's just not making contact. I'll show. I mean, even with that 2k in this, uh, I think there's a 1k in here. When there's a full 1,000 volts on there, it starts arcing out. That's why I let it drop a bit. So, you know, let it sort of drain through the the valve as it were. Alright we'll go and bung another one in and we'll test that one. These get really very hot. In the actual amplifier that I build I shall uh, put a fan in there. As you can see, what have we got here? Two, four, I've got seven all together. We'll go and uh, test the one that's got the biggest reading let me get it set up so cap on right side up yeah really take some uh, power in these things what's that 50 watts just to uh, power the heat the uh, filament going up you can see that right there the meter is only supposed to read one kilowatt as you can see that one is a lot brighter than that last one we tested and this one has good emission it's got what 91 milliamps on there so that's, uh, that's the best valve I've got. And that's quite impressive. Right. Uh, don't really need to keep it on there to warm up. Because as I said it's a directly heated uh, filament. HD off. Leave the filament powered. There we go. Let it drop be below 500 volts. And we're done. So yeah.
and there we go that's about it really nothing more to add apart from if you do muck about with these things be careful and uh, apart from that I mean these really like uh, like a lot of valves have got no place apart from just the fun you have building valve amplifiers uh, I mean to to make a 500 watt amplifier using transistors would be far more efficient and as I said this take these take 50 watts just to get the things working uh, so it's really not efficient really not green but great fun nonetheless catch you later